also, you can see the route we've taken. It's only a tiny bit roundabout, but you can probably infer that we were maybe supposed to go a little bit more directly up slash north slash whatever. But it's fine, because the game wants you to go everywhere at some point anyway, so, you know, just deal with it. Anyway, here's a screen that will torture you. We're not going to deal with it just yet, because I have to show how we were supposed to get here, you know, like this, but, uh... Man... That goddamn spiral screen. Oh, is that the screen? Oh, no. I think I know what screen this is, and... Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I wanted to kill some things before we do that. We're actually going to take a little bit more of a, of a roundabout route, but believe me, I'm, I'm not letting anybody get away from this without being put through that screen. I'm a, I'm a relatively conscientious Let's Player slash Editor, but... Uh, no, there are times... I've got, to I've got to maintain a, at least a baseline level of pettiness. There are times when the suffering must be maintained. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. I mean, you know, just just you know, speaking entirely theoretically off the top of my head, like say if you spent in 45 entire minutes going through a very slow block pushing puzzle, that's definitely something that you want to you, you want to make a point of not editing. You know, just you know, completely theoretically. Man, that's pretty fucked up. Who would do that? Yeah. Fortunately, that's not actually happened, and this is only a hypothetical example, and we're we're actually all safe from such horrors. Anyway, there's a cave here. We can go in it, but uh, well, we're not getting past these just yet. Maybe it's possible to glitch past them, but uh, it's just ice. Why can't we just have Emily punch them? Hmm. I mean, isn't that supposed to be her thing? Supposed to be a big punch person? Yeah, but I guess she can't punch gigantic icicles. Anyway, here's the spiral screen. We've we've reached it from the other side. And it's just It's nonsense. It's just fucking I hate this. It's just a catastrophe of elevations. I hate this screen. And that, that jump over to the right of where we are, just jumping down that way, is one way, so you can't get back up to that path from that part. Most of this you can climb on, and there's like a bunch of stuff everywhere, and also this is the screen where you're supposed to get ice for the ice cream guy. That I think, I'm pretty sure you can only get that on this screen. So there's a bunch of those everywhere, so you want to be exploring thoroughly and shooting everything, and there's like a million billion elevations. And you've got to jump up on stuff, and then jump down, and then jump over, and then jump back up. But every time you want to jump down, it's like, is it safe? Is this the one way? Am I going to be able to get back up? I hate it. I hate it. I can't deal with this screen and a handful of others like it. Oh, speaking of, speaking of, look at those, look at that fucking tree in the distance there. Yeah. Or for, or that little area off to the right. Do you know what elevation that's at? Fuck you. That's well, at your level. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think they, I think the developers expected people to cotton on to the the aiming the dots trick like immediately, and I think a lot of players just didn't because it's not the kind of thing that it would occur to most people to do, and the, the result is hell. Like, once you know that, then yeah, it's, it's great, and everything works, and it's just like, hmm. Hitting that switch ends combat, by the way, and I don't like that. I, I wanted to keep the streak going a bit longer. But at least it gave me a super clean place to cut the audio. Like, that's probably the best audio edit you're ever going to see in this whole series. Like, that's, that's, that's the top. Um, anyway, there's a whole thing over here, by the way. It's surprisingly easy to stumble upon this, just completely by accident. But, uh, we can't progress here. 
Well, actually we can, because I have actually personally, like, just tiptoed around the edge of some of these icicles and, and gotten over to stuff, but there's a bunch of triggers on the other side that don't fire at this point, so it's not worth it. You also have to fast travel out, because it's not possible to glitch back. It's a good time. Anyway, um, uh, snowmen. Yes, snowmen. There are some of those here. I believe I, I previously spoiled the existence of that. You may have noticed on the last screen that these are not just snowmen. These are snowmen that also have rocket launchers? These are RPG snowmen. I don't mean like snowmen from a role-playing game. I mean fucking rocket propelled grenade snowmen. In an RPG. Is that a meta joke? I can't tell if that's a meta joke. Anyway, these guys are tanky. They got a lot of health and they don't take a lot of damage. And they hit really fucking hard. Yeah, I remember these guys being a big pain in the ass. Not only do they hit really hard, they also hit really hard with chill. And like, a, like two or three hits from them will get you inflicted with chill, which will not only ruin your movement and dodge speed, but also will make you fire slower, so you'll then have to spend longer fighting them. So I really recommend not getting hit by these guys. On the other hand, if they fire like a whole burst of shots at you, and you block all of them, and you happen to have, say, 105% pin body, you can get some revenge. By the way, this is why you don't want to melee these guys. They, they do that. Eats a lot of health. Most of anything that you'll try to do at melee range will leave you immobilized for just long enough that you'll just eat that, and, well, it won't be pleasant. Here's Pinbody. Look at that number. That's like five seconds of shooting. Done in an instant. God, I love Pinbody. I do appreciate Emily's just like existential rejection of these snowmen. Yeah. Just like, no, no, I refuse. I love snowmen. Goats, on the other hand, make her all reminiscent. Is that the correct sense to use reminiscent in? Like, is reminiscent not like a thing? Is reminiscent of something? Can you be reminiscent? Is that how that works? It should be. I'm, I'm making it how that works. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna irregardless reminiscent. That's a bold move, my friend. Anyway, here's some more elevation help. Like, I, I want to get all of these trees, but you can't just shoot all of them. You've got to just one, one elevation at a time, and don't forget to also look for opportunities to jump to other places so you can walk to other places and jump to other places. Just keep, keep thinking about that elevation. But at the same time, don't, please don't think too hard about elevation, otherwise your brain might scream. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure that all of the, that whole little descent right there, that's all the same elevation. Yeah. I hate it. I mean, it's not that bad once you get to know it, but like, you know, but yeah, I, yeah. I mean, this is far from the only place in the game we'll ever encounter this, but, like, Bergen Trail specifically is, like, at least from my, at least from my experience, is just, it's, like, it's so much of that packed into one place. It's, like, you, you almost can, can't even really trust your eyes with regards to where anything is. Yep. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like it's a developer's making a point a little bit. Oh, by the way, snowmen will just, like, they're one of the few enemies that will just attack you automatically. They'll just aggro on you, so that's nice. But yeah, this game was notably uh, several chapters worth of early access. Here's another perfectly regular item, by the way. 
So they, they released it like one chunk at a time and they were making it more or less in line. So they were gradually trying new stuff out and learning stuff and I guess this was the point at which they decided they were going to experiment with elevation. And the experiment they did and I guess eventually they decided to tone it back just a tiny bit. But only a tiny bit because this is cross code and it must by law be on its bullshit at, at all times. Anyway, here's this guy again. Gonna be honest, this guy doesn't really, like, help. Mm. Like, the problem with a lot of, I mean, obviously, like, once you start talking to him, it's like, oh, it's, it's the parkour guy, but, like, this guy is extremely not helpful when, like, 80% of the NPCs in this game are just, like, a slightly grayed out generic portrait. Yeah, it's true. Anyway, this one's timed, so uh, you better hop to it. Like, this is not a generous time limit. You've got to go full pelt. You've got to be watching the edges of the screen to see where the next one is. I don't know why they didn't just put, like, arrows on each one to show you where the next one is. I don't know why they did this whole thing. But yeah. A little bit over three seconds to spare, and I consider that a good run. Oh god, I just saw. This guy's name is Bob. Yep. That's really not helping the whole memorability thing. Of course not. He does flatter us a tiny bit though, and he does give us a pop-up that literally just says there is loot so everything is okay, but it's all sandwiches. I mean, not what I'm complaining, chef sandwiches are a decent eating item. I mean, as a, as a Nimpy's Adventure veteran, I would argue that there is no better reward he could have given you than sandwiches. I can't really argue with that. Anyway, yes, I actually did deliberately jump into the water there just to contrast with all that. But yeah, just in case it hasn't sunk in yet, avatars can't swim. They will just vaporize on contact with water and respawn somewhere nearby. I don't know if this is like a, an arbitrary decision within Crosswells, like it was decided that avatars will not be able to swim, or if this is just a fact of how instant matter works. It's never really clarified. There's instant matter fish, right? So, I mean, that would seem to... Are there? There's fish enemies. Yeah, but it's a JRPG, they all float. Besides, if I, if I was doing, like, you could you could totally make them, like, despawn in a way that makes it look like they've gone underwater, but actually they've just removed themselves. Video games do that kind of bullshit trickery all the time. That'd be pretty on brand. I don't know. I feel like this could be unraveled eventually, but not now. Now here's a... I, I mean, I hesitate to call this a puzzle, but... It's... it's what's gonna pass for a puzzle for now, at least. Hmm. I mean, it probably requires you to use your brain a tiny bit, because if you just go over there and whack that switch and try to run, you will not make it into it. You have to get a little bit far away from it in order to give yourself enough time to actually make the run. So that's something. And then, of course, you need to, to realise that you can jump down from here to get somewhere new, and you've got to figure that stuff out. But that's not really also very much of a puzzle either. Like, you could have just gone there from the switch place. Yeah, it's something. Anyway, once again, there's not actually any point to coming over here yet because it's gated. So we'll just um, we'll just come back for that later. But not until after I murder every rare plant. I must break them. Let none survive. 
anyway. It's actually a little difficult sometimes to, to keep track of exactly where you're supposed to be going. Other than you know, generally up, and you can kind of you can kind of puzzle it, all, puzzle it all out. It's not that difficult, but it's a tiny bit difficult. It feels noticeably thinky. Is what I'm gonna go with. I mean, this is definitely a puzzle. Like, look at that. That just screams puzzle. This, on the other hand, is not a puzzle. This is literally just a room with a box in it. It sure looks like a puzzle, though. No. Yeah. Maybe not a puzzle, but it's it certainly hmm. is supposed to look like, oh, that sword? Can I get that sword? Yeah. There's something to this. But no, the outside is, is the puzzle. This whole thing just reeks of having to be sold. Don't, of course, make the mistake of thinking that we're anywhere near to being done with bullshit elevations yet, by the way. But yeah, here's this trick again. It's a staircase. It's just, just an ordinary, unremarkable staircase. Don't pay any attention to the fact that you're going up a couple elevations. And I always get kind of weirded out when, like, even in a game as thick with meta stuff as this one, when the characters in the game start talking about how pretty stuff is, I like. I know it makes sense for people to talk about pretty things, but like, I can hear the artist congratulating himself. And don't get me wrong, it's real good stuff. This feels kind of weird, you know. Anyway, I have a confession to make. I still don't actually understand how this puzzle works. Like, I never really solved it. I just kind of felt my way through it. I have a sneaking suspicion that that's actually deliberate. Like, this is this is supposed to be a puzzle where you just rely on your gamer senses tingling and just keep shooting stuff until you reach the end. I mean, it would not be but, like, the first time a puzzle's ever been solved like that. Like, I, I just can't get it, get the idea out of my head that this is a puzzle that's just designed to encourage you to just feel through it, rather than figure out how it works. Like, some of this other stuff is definitely changing how these bridges work. Like, by the end of this, you're able to have two bridges up. And I don't really get it, but whatever. Or at least I think you are, anyway. Maybe even that's just a fake memory of mine. Anyway, naturally, all of that is simply in aid of getting over here and getting to that chest, because we were wondering how to reach that chest. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I did get pretty excited when I realized this was the end of this fucking trail, but not for... not for the reasons that this girl seems to think. I don't know. She's She's got our number, though. Like, we, we knew we were gonna figure out how to get up here sooner or later. It was inevitable. By the way, watch me try and make this shot. Like, I... I... I hate it. I hate this, but I must shoot every rare plant. I must shoot all of them, even if I have to find this stupid trick shot that actually lets you do it. Like, maybe I'm doing this in the wrong place? But this is what it's like. My immediate thought is that you want to be, like, at the upper part of that- of the platform to your left? This is what it's like to- 
always be trying to shoot the rare plants. It's just like... But it turns out that you can just barely make it from there. It's not actually really much of a trick shot after all. Here's a question. How are we getting rusty bits off of a plant? Let's just not. Anyway, this is a decent weapon as a, as a reward for making our way up here. This specifically lets us do even more damage to the enemies that we've weakened. It's great as a, as a punisher. I don't think I'd want to equip two of these, but one combined with whatever's the basic the, the basis of your build seems like a pretty good choice. Anyway, this is the end of Bergen Trail. So let's go back and deal with Gene now. Right after I get that. Like, come on. Emily even commented on the rocks and everything. We can't, we can't just leave that there now. But yes, I did miss this the first time, and I'm a little, little bit annoyed about this. But uh, yeah, there's there's gonna be a lot of missing things the first time around in this series. It's just how this is gonna work. Oh yeah, also we got we got the stuff for the steak lady. You can't really not miss things in this game. Like, it's just not possible. There's... Yeah. It's so dense. There's, there's just too much. There's just too much stuff. As ever, as in literally all things, this game is just a bit much all the time. Oh well. The stake science will continue. In fact, the stake science will continue immediately. So once again, there's like a whole secret ingredient here that we're immediately told what it is. I don't understand how things in this game get censored on the quest pop-ups, like why? If only we had some dry wood. There. Yeah. yeah, it has to specifically be dry wood. It can't just be wood that has been dried. It has to be wood that was dry when we found it. But yeah, this has the distinct smell of a completely different biome. Yet yeah, shockingly enough, it turns out that the place where Jean was attacked by the legendary creature is the place where the legendary creature is. Like, I... I don't understand this girl sometimes. Anyway, here's the capture device. It's a round device that absorbs souls of defeated enemies, but it's completely different from the Master Ball, okay? I guess the Master Ball doesn't require them to be defeated, that's like its whole thing. Anyways, Sergei is clearly not pleased about this. So anyway, here is the, the, the legendary bunny. Ray. We did it? Question mark? We absolutely did. I don't think yeeting it off a cliff counts as capturing it, but sure, whatever. That's details. They don't need to know that. It spawns back, its HP goes down to zero. Anyway, I warned you about the lazy reference. Do you think that wasn't just foreshadowing? Obviously. You knew in your heart that this was going to happen.
Anyway, Sergei actually pops up with something and the game cuts it off and fortunately I went and recovered it later. Here's what he said. It was a good time. This was a dumb quest. <laughs>